Good morning, class. We are looking at vectors. Polar coordinates, vectors, and here's section about vectors. We've covered po polar equations and graphs, the complex plane, De Moore's theorem, vectors, and now, we're going to cover vectors with the following objectives. Graph vectors, find a position vector, add and subtract vectors, algebraically, find a scalar multiple and the magnitude of a vector, find a unit vector, find a vector from its direction and magnitude, model with vectors. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on this. We've already done that. Many trigonometric identities from fundamental identity, identities to sum and difference to sine law, cosine law. So synopsis of uh, trig identities. Double angle, half angle. Finding sine squared alpha from this equation and cosine squared alpha from this one, then half of it. Then we discuss the half angle. Uh, product to sum and sum to product formula is covered just briefly. Polar coordinates. The positive side of the x-axis is called the polar axis. The origin is called the pole. And a point is represented by r comma theta. So a point with coordinates x comma y, x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta, where r can be found as x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Pythagorean theorem. So x, y, you can see it in this right triangle. Polar has a coordinates r theta can be represented as follows. r theta and then add 2k pi. Of course, k is an integer. There are infinite in many ways of writing it. If we want r to be negative, then we have to add odd multiples of pi. So pi plus 2k pi. And to plot, we start with theta always. We start with theta. We looked at graphs. When theta is constant, it represents a line through the origin. Y equals tan alpha times x. If R equals A, if R is fixed, it represents a circle centered at the origin or the pole with the radius A. If we have r cosine theta, which is x equals a constant, that represents a vertical line. Or sine theta is a constant, y equals b, represents a horizontal line. And any of these represent a circle, r equals 2a cosine theta or negative 2a cosine theta, r equals 2a sine theta or negative 2a sine theta. In the case of a cosine, in all cases, the radius is A. In the case of a cosine, the center is located on the uh, y-axis, if you will, on the x-axis, if you will, or the polar axis <coughs> on the right or on the left. If it's uh, involving sine, then it's on the y-axis, or theta equals pi over 2 the center. And this is for the sake of plus minus 2a cosine theta. This is for the sake of plus minus 2a sine theta. We also looked at the complex plane, the Moore's theorem. This was the summary. 
a complex number is formed as z equals x plus y i x and y are real numbers and i is squared of negative one i want to remind you here that Let me just write it down here, then I'm going to erase it. I is squared of negative 1. I squared is negative 1. I cubed is negative I. I to the power of 4 is positive. Okay. We have learned this before. I just wanted to uh, mention that, and so we can uh, easily move on. The magnitude or modulus of Z is equal to R, the square root of X squared plus Y squared equals R. So the product of Z and Z bar or Z complement, okay? It's the conjugate, X plus YI or A plus BI. The conjugate is X minus YI or A minus BI. X equals R cosine theta, Y equals R sine theta. And Z can be represented as X plus YI, which is R cosine theta plus I R sine theta or R cis theta. The representation, the graph will take place as follows. We have a real axis, the X axis. We have the imaginary axis, the Y axis. So when we want to plot a point, we have it X comma Y as far as the location is concerned. This is R C theta or R e to the power of I theta. R squared is X squared plus Y squared, tan theta equals Y over X. When we want to multiply two complex numbers, we multiply their magnitudes. We add up their arguments. So R1, R2, cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus I, sine of theta one plus theta two, or simply R one, R two, cis theta one plus theta two. Let me write that. That is somewhat interesting to know a shorthand notation of this would be R one, R two, cis theta one plus theta two. And if we want to divide them, would be R1 divided by R2, this theta 1 minus theta 2. So let me erase, well, not yet, but this would be, let me have a different color here. This would be R1 over R2, this theta 1. Minus theta. That would be the shorthand notation. The Moore's theorem says if you want to raise a complex number to a power, you can raise the r to that power and then multiply the theta by n. In essence, really follows that one. Now let me erase so you can read this. So if a Complex number is given as r cos r cis theta zero, and we want to take a root where n is larger than or equal to a uh, two. Okay, we can find the roots as finding the nth root of r, and then cis, which stands for cosine and then sine, right? So cis theta zero over n plus two k power n, or maybe 
if you go with degrees, it would be 360 degrees. Let me. So this could be 360K, okay? 360K. So uh, in case you want to write it in degrees, many times it's a tad easier to use degrees in any event. So what is the value of K? So you replace the K with 0, 1, 2, and you go all the way to N minus 1. Eight point eight vectors, geometric vectors and scalars. Vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Scalar is a quantity that has magnitude only. That's the definition. Examples. Weight versus mass. Velocity versus speed. You may remember some of this from basic physics in uh, high school. So when you have a line, it continues indefinitely, like PQ continues indefinitely on both sides. When you have a line segment, it just stops at two points, P and Q. When you have a vector, we have the initial point and then the terminal point, which is indicated, indicated by the arrow. It's directed line segment PQ. This is the notation that we use. So. It's easier to see it here, perhaps. Here's the vector PQ with an arrow at top of it. Magnitude is the distance from P to Q. Direction is the direction from P to Q. If we look at all these vectors, Two vectors are equal. For example, V equals the vector PQ. V becomes the same as W if they have the same magnitude and direction, meaning they must be parallel and then same size. If they are parallel, anywhere you come up with the parallel uh, vector and the size is the same, the magnitude, the vectors are considered equal. Now we are in a, in essence, we're working on the synopsis of what we need to get us started. Vector properties of addition and scalar products. Vector addition is commutative and associative. And I hope you remember both of them. Ultimately, they mean order is not important. When you're adding A plus B is the same as B plus A. A times B is the same as B times A. That's commutative, associated when you have more than two. A plus B plus C, put it in any order. In, in essence, it's a shorthand version of that. Therefore, V plus W or W plus V, that's the commutative property u plus v plus w or u plus v first and then plus w. So basically the two say order is not important, add them up in any order you want. v plus zero is zero plus v. Sometimes they put an arrow at top of zero to represent a zero vector, not zero number. So again, let me, sometimes they write it in this format. Okay, zero vector. And when you add a zero vector to any vector, nothing changes. This one is the opposite, if you will. V plus negative V, they add up to zero.
if you recall when we wanted to define subtraction in uh, basic math, we did the same thing. V minus W means add to V the opposite of W minus W. As far as the properties of scalar, uh, products or multiplying vectors by numbers, geometrically scalars, okay? Uh, so when you multiply by a number, that's why a number is called scalar. In short, the moment you see scalar isn't just an essence, and you can think of them as numbers. Uh, it just affects the magnitude. So number zero times V gives you zero. Number one, these are numbers, these are scalars. So numbers or scalars. One times V remains the same. Negative one times V makes it minus V, so it becomes the opposite of that. Alpha plus beta, they are both numbers, like two plus seven. That's the idea. Alpha plus beta, and this is a vector. So alpha times V plus beta times. Alpha times V plus W, you can distribute. Alpha times V plus alpha times W. Alpha times beta times V, you can put the alpha beta together as a product of two numbers. So these are some properties and I think they are pretty straightforward. So if we look at the following, here's the vector V. Uh, two times V would be parallel to that same direction and the magnitude, the size must be two times that minus v or minus one v is parallel to that, but in the opposite direction because of that negative sign, okay? Adding vectors geometrically. So we have vector V, vector W, and we want to add them up basically. The initial point of W, you put it to the terminal point of V, and then you connect the initial point of V to the terminal point of W. That would be the triangular method. We can use parallelogram. So here's V, here's W. If you put it in this format, just the way we did it here, we can easily see that. If we put the initial points together, then it is the diagonal of the parallelogram. So with these two, you make up this parallelogram and then the W plus V can be found in this manner or triangular method. Commutative V plus W equals W plus V. So this in essence shows the commutative property. So V, no V plus W is this one. Now, if we happen to have it here, we can move the V up here and show this is W plus V. And that's graphically the proof in essence. Associative property says basically you have three vectors, add them up in any order you want. Therefore, let's say this is U, this is V, this is W. So if we put it in a triangular format, meaning 
the terminal point of U, the initial point of V. The terminal point of V, the initial point of W. And we connect the initial point of U to the terminal point of W. That becomes the whole thing, okay? This is one way to look at it, which means U plus V plus W. So the blue one, U plus V plus W. The blue one results in the resultant vector, the red one. Now, here's U. Here's V, here's W, and here's the result, as I was mentioning, the first one, okay? Now, let's go this way. Here's U, here's W, here's V plus W, my apologies. And so U plus V, plus W, because these two, notice this is V plus W. So V plus W is this yellow one. And so connect these two. That is also the proof for that. Opposite vectors, V and negative V, they add up to zero. So if you look at the graph of V and negative V, they are parallel. They have the same size, but in opposite direction. So they cancel each other, they end up being zero. And if you happen to have a zero vector, and when you add it to V again, this zero is not a number. That's the answer. If we want to go with V minus W, we are going to find negative W, the opposite of W, and add it to V. So take a look. Here's V. Here's W. So this is negative W. So parallel to that, but the opposite direction. Parallel to that, identical in size, the opposite direction. And so now you connect these two, and this is V minus W. So I hope everybody is okay with that. So these are adding vectors geometrically. Let's look at an example of that. So we are given V, W, and U. We are interested in finding V minus W. So here's the W. We move it next to V and we go in a different direction to make up the negative W. So these two are parallel, have the same size, but opposite means negative. Connect these two. This is minus W, connect these two. So that would be the graph. Two V plus three W. First, let's go with V and make it larger by a factor of two. So same one goes up, double the size. And you can put it anywhere you want. Doesn't have to continue with that. You can put it here. Anywhere, as long as it's parallel to that and the size is two times that. So if we use the same location, this is, again, this may not be too scale, but it's about two times that. 
W, make it three times that same direction, same direction, three times that. So this is 2V. So we made it two times larger. This one, we're going to make it three times. And so the way we do that, of course, this is the terminal point for 2V. This is the, and this is 3V. And this is the initial point for 3W. Connect these two. And that's your answer. So this one, this one, connect this two. Let's do part C. 2V, let's use the same thing. 2V. Minus W. So this one, let's move it here. Okay, this one, you already have negative W. So put it anywhere you want, parallel to this, same <clears throat> size, same direction. That makes it negative W. So put it here. U. Now U, you can put it anywhere you want, parallel to that. But where do we want to put it? We want to put the initial point of U at the terminal point of negative W, this one, not this one. So you put it here. So this is negative, negative W, and this is U. So let's go over it one more time. This is 2V minus W plus U. So connect these two. Connect these two. There you have it. So graphing vectors. Magnitude of vectors. So this represents the norm or magnitude of a vector. In other words, looks like an absolute value, word, but you have two of them. To compute the magnitude and direction of a vector, an algebraic way of representing vectors is needed. So position vector. If a V is represented by A comma B, is an algebraic vector whose initial point is at the origin, then V is called a position vector. This is a vector notation. Sometimes they call it angle bracket. So, Remember with the vectors, as, as long as you have a parallel one with the same size, you can put it anywhere. So if you move that such that the initial point is at the origin, we call it the position vector. This has coordinates zero, zero. This has coordinates A, B. So this is a pair A, B. This represents the vector AB. Okay, we don't want to mix them up. Use parentheses to represent two things, a pair as well as an open interval. But these are called angle brackets, and it's a vector. So algebraic format, AI plus BJ, either like that or just angle brackets, A and B. A and B are called components of the vector. In other words, if you're looking at this vector, component along the x-axis is A, along the y-axis is B. So as you can clearly see, this distance is A, right? And this distance is B. Let's actually write this. Okay. All right, so magnitude of a vector, just Pythagorean theorem, square root of A squared plus B squared, because magnitude by definition is the distance uh, from point, 
from the initial point to the terminal point of a vector. Initial point, terminal point. Initial point, terminal point. So this distance is the magnitude. So a squared plus b squared under the radical. If that is the case, this must always be positive. Worst case scenario, it can be zero. So it can never be negative. Two vectors that are opposites, they must have equal magnitude. W and negative W, for example, okay? And if the magnitude is zero, then it must be a zero vector, V equals zero. That means this is a zero vector, it's not a zero number. This is a number. This is a vector. If you multiply A, and A is a scalar, is a number, times a vector, and you come up with the magnitude, is the same as coming up with the magnitude of, of the vector and multiplied by A, of course, in an absolute value sense. Because if A is negative, I see for the magnitude, you take it to be positive. So that's why this is the absolute value of A. A is a number. This is magnitude of V. A is a scalar a number. Let me, again, I want to make sure we... So A is a number by that. So anytime you see scalar, that means a number. And the unit vector refers to a vector whose magnitude is one. So any vector of magnitude one is called a unit vector. Not that we are not discussing the direction, okay? So that's the unit vector. A vector with initial and terminal points. The initial is P located at X sub one, Y sub one, and the terminal is located at Q with X sub two and Y sub two as the coordinates, is equal to the position vector V is the same as position vector PQ with the arrow at top x sub two minus x sub one comma y sub two minus uh, y sub one in vector notation. So if two pairs are given, subtract the first from the second one. Subtract the initial from the terminal point. That's the concept. This is initial. This is terminal. Or position vector V, V is P1, P2. Again, notation A comma B, which represents X sub two minus X sub one comma Y sub two minus y sub one. So I hope uh, it's clear to everybody as to uh, what's going on. Again, uh, I made a note of it here. Angle brackets, sometimes known as chevrons, are used to represent vectors. So this, this looks like less than, this looks like greater than when you put them together. It represents vector. All right, so if we happen to have two points, uh, P1 and P2, we have the coordinates for P1, we have the coordinates for P2. X sub two, X sub, Y sub two, X sub one, Y sub one. 
their difference x sub two minus x sub one is along the x axis and y sub two minus y sub one along the y axis, we can see that it's equal to this. Uh, this is called the position vector because the initial point is at the origin. Identical vectors, this is a position vector, okay? For example, we want to find the position vector for this case if P1 and P2 are given as follows. P1 has coordinates negative 1, 2. P2 has coordinates 4, 6. And according to this, all we have to do is to calculate X sub 2 minus X sub 1, comma, Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1, putting it in angle brackets. Okay, so we have negative 1, 2 here. We have a positive four comma six here, and this is a P one P two. Using this, four minus negative one comma six minus two. This would be plus, making it five comma four, and that is now locate five. Locate four, bring them together. This is the point with coordinates five comma four, and this is the vector with components five comma four. Again, please distinguish between the two. We don't want to mix them up. Vector equality. Two vectors are equal if the corresponding components are equal. V has components A sub 1 and B sub 1. If it's equal to W, which has components A sub 2 and B sub 2, and B sub 2, then A sub 1 must be the same as A sub 2, B sub 1 must be the same as B sub 2. That's what this is all about. Two vectors are equal if their components are identical. So, and of course, again, reminding you, unit vector is a vector u such that the magnitude of that is one. Now, the unit vectors i and j, i along the x-axis, j along the y-axis. So a comma b, this would be a, this bracket represents the i vector. This bracket represents the j vector, so we can write it as a i plus b j. And this is the i vector, this is the j vector. i vector along the x-axis, and the magnitude is one, so one zero. J vector along the y axis and the magnitude one. So this would be one zero, this would be zero one. And again, reminding you of the position vector. Find the position vector of the vector V equals uh, PQ, if P is given and Q is given, two uh, points are given. Uh, this is the term, uh, this is the initial, this is the terminal point. So uh, X sub two minus X sub one, that means uh, four minus four. Y sub two minus Y sub one, that means uh, six minus nine. This gives us zero, this gives us negative three. And one way to write that is negative three J. So if you look at this, remember zero one is the uh, J vector. So zero comma negative three is negative three J, negative three J.
We're going to move on. All right. Find a vector from its direction and magnitude. Uh, vector P1, P2 is represented in vector notation A comma B. Unit vector in the direction of a specific vector such as V is the vector we write it and divide by its magnitude. Because if you do so, because remember the unit vector by definition is a vector whose magnitude is one, right? So how do you make the magnitude one for a vector v. So basically, you divide by its magnitude. I hope uh, it's making sense to everybody. So a quick recap of that. You want a unit vector. A unit vector has this definition that the, ma the magnitude must be one, that's all. So how do you make the magnitude of V one? Let me just get stuck again. You divide it by its magnitude. All right, find the vector from its direction and magnitude. V is the magnitude and then times this one, cosine alpha I plus sine alpha J. And that is a unit vector. So here's the vector V, the unit vector in the same direction of V, if this angle is alpha, this is the position, if you will, okay? Then cosine alpha, sine alpha using that, the magnitude times cosine alpha I plus sine alpha J. All right. So the magnitude is square root of a squared plus b squared. The unit vector v over the, the magnitude of a v and the v, uh, the vector is the magnitude times the unit vector, times the unit vector, everybody. Find the vector v whose magnitude is seven and whose component in the I direction is both positive and equal to the component in the J direction. First, let's see what's given to us. What's given to us is the magnitude, which is seven. What's given to us is that the components are equal. So we write, here's the magnitude, which is seven. If we write the vector as AI plus BJ, A must be equal to B. So this is the given part according to the question. Uh, we know A squared plus B squared must be 49 or seven squared. And we can replace this with A. So we get two a squared is 49. a squared is 49 over two. Uh, a is the same as b, take a root, which is seven over square root of two or seven square root of two over two. Please understand, I'm gonna show you that one. So this a is square root of 49 over two which makes it seven over square root of two. And if I multiply by square root of two over square root of two, I get this answer. Therefore, A plus B I 
we can write it in this fashion. A i plus b j. A i plus b j. 7 squared of 2 over 2 i plus 7 squared of 2 uh, j or or we could write this as 7 squared of 2 over 2 comma 7 squared of 2 2 using vector notation. Finding a unit vector, unit vector is a vector with a magnitude one, reminding everybody unit vector in the direction of V is U equal V over the magnitude of V and magnitude of the vector AI plus BJ or in this, these are two different formats representing the same thing, okay? The magnitude is the square root of A squared plus B squared and V is magnitude of V times. Uh, this is the synopsis of what we, have seen. So in this example, we want to find a unit vector in the same direction for the vector v equals negative 3i plus 4j. So basically, we want this, everybody. We want this. So all we have to do, calculate the magnitude and divide this by. So again, we are interested in finding this. So the magnitude is square root of a squared plus b squared. a is uh, negative 3 and b is 4. Makes it 9 plus 16, 25, and the square root of that is 5. So all you have to do, divide the vector by 5. Divide this one by 5. And uh, you get negative 3 over 5i plus 4 over 5j. And we're done. Now, by the way, just as before, you can always check. Checking means you can prove that this has the magnitude 1 by raising this to the second power. This 1 to the second power must be 1. So if we do that, this is negative 3 over 5 squared or 9 over 25. This is 16 over 25. And that is one, and square root of one is one. So you can prove that you've come up with the correct answer because the magnitude is one. Okay. So find the vector from its direction and magnitude. Uh, here's the magnitude direction alpha between between the vector and the x-axis or the i is somewhere between 0 and 360. In other words, the positive portion. The vector has the following components. Uh, magnitude of v times cosine alpha i plus sine alpha j. So in example 5, we want to find the direction angle of v given its components. And uh, as you recall, uh, tan theta is y over x or b over a, let me write this. So tan of theta or alpha, tan of alpha is uh, y over x or b over a. And so, 3 over negative 3. So this is the angle. By the way, this is obviously in the second quadrant. And we end up with negative 1, tan of theta or alpha. So let's go with the reference arc. Tan of theta equals 1 gives you pi over 4 or 45 degrees. If it was positive 1, 45 degrees because it's negative 1, subtract it from 1 AD, and it gives you 135. So let me quickly remind you of that. So uh, tan theta equals 1, and theta of reference. Theta of reference is 45 degrees, OK? Negative 1, you have to adjust it, because it's in the second quadrant. And 
this would be to get this one, you have to subtract this from 180. So just in case. 180 minus 45. Just in case. All right. Uh, in this example, we want to find a find the vector whose magnitude is nine. So this is nine. And the angle it makes with the positive x-axis alpha is 225 degrees. So basically, we have this and we have the alpha. So we want to write it in this fashion. And to do so, A is the magnitude times cosine alpha. So nine times cosine of 225. And B is nine times sine of 225. Now, cosine of 225, first I wanna make sure we understand what we're dealing with here. So let me use this one, 225 degrees, everybody is 180 plus 45 degrees and it's quadrant three. In quadrant three, both sine and cosine are negative. So for 45 degrees, it's squared of two over two. So reference arc, 45 degrees, cosine and sine are both positive squared of two over two. In the third quadrant, negative. So negative, squared of two over two times nine. So V is negative nine squared of two over two I minus nine squared of two over two J. I hope everybody understands what's going on here. So again, this, maybe I write it as follows. So this is minus squared of two over two. So is this one, minus squared of two over two. Again, because of the quadrant, everybody. So we know the, value to be squared of two over two, as far as the sign depends on the quadrant. Add and subtract vectors algebraically, vector properties of addition and scalar products, and we remember how to deal with them. So if V is given as such, with the components and W is given as such with the components. So V is A sub one I plus B sub one J or uh, A sub one B sub one in uh, vector notation. W is A sub two I plus B sub two J. And alpha is a number or A is a number if you will. In this case, it's alpha. When you wanna add them up, you add up their components. You add up this one, with this one and you get this. Okay, let me just do this. So you're gonna add this and this. You're gonna add this two. That's all there is to. If you wanna subtract it in the same manner, subtract one from the other, in the case of V minus W, you get a1 minus a sub 2, a sub 1 minus a sub 2, times i plus b1 minus b sub 2 times j, and this is the uh, vector notation. If you multiply it, so that's basically what happens here. Take a look at uh, v having components a sub 1 and b sub 1, uh, w having components uh, a sub 2 and b sub 2. So if this has component a sub 1 and a sub 2, you put it next to a sub one, this point having the first component that a sub one plus a sub two. Over here for V, this is B sub one, for W, this is B sub two, and this is B sub two. And if you add it to B sub one, gives you this one. So this is really a good illustration as to what's happening add up 
components, add up components. We multiply. So if V has components A1 and B1, as we mentioned here. Now, if we multiply this by alpha, stretch it by a factor of alpha this way, by a factor of alpha this way, so the resulting vector has components alpha times A1 and alpha times B1, where alpha is a scalar, is a real number. And again, the magnitude, everybody remembers that. So how do you find the magnitude? Pythagorean theorem. A1 squared plus B1 squared is the magnitude of V squared. Pythagorean theorem. So, uh, the magnitude is distance from O2, the point P1. So that's the illustration of this one. We know the magnitude. All right, uh, let's do some examples. We want to add and subtract ve vectors algebra. It is extremely simple, everybody. Let's do this. Uh, we want to add these two vectors. So we're going to write the V plus W. Just write the two, the way they are given. Then what do we do? We want to add these two numbers, the I components. We get negative I. We want to add the J components. 4J and minus 5J, they add up to negative J. So minus I minus J. For part B, we put a negation sign between the two. For part B, we put a negation sign between the two. So we have minus 2i plus 5j. So negative 3i negative 2i gives us minus 5i, positive 4j, positive 5j gives us 9j. So add and subtract vectors algebraically, extremely simple. I hope everybody is okay with that. Let's do this one. Find a scalar multiple and magnitude of a vector if a V is given as minus 3i plus 4j or in this format. Okay. Vector format. And W is 2i minus 5j or 2 minus 5. We want to find 3 times V. So just multiply it by 3. Now, uh, you can say 3 times this or 3 times that. Any, any format will do the job. So this becomes negative nine. You distribute it. This becomes 12. You could, depends on how they want you to answer. You could write this as negative nine I plus 12 J, whatever they ask you. Uh, part B, two times V minus three times W, replace the V, replace the W and distribute. So 2 times negative 3 minus 6, 2 times 4 is 8, minus 3 times 2 is 6, uh, 3 times minus 5 is negative 15. So you distribute. Now we are going to subtract. Let me. So minus 6 minus 6, comma 8 minus negative 15, which means minus 12, and then 8 plus 15, or 23, 
or negative 12i plus 23g. Either way is fine. Finally, to find the magnitude of a V, we have the formula square root of A squared plus B squared, where A is negative 3, B is positive 4. Needless to say, this is 9. This is 16. They add up to 25. And the answer is square root of 25, which is 5.